Hey, this book is about how to apply military principles in business world, how to be a leader, how to lead and win. And core principle of this teaching is extreme ownership. And what extreme ownership is all about? It's to own everything in our, our own world, everything. And by everything we mint. Now let's go through notes and I will tell you kind of some stories while we go through these notes. As SEALs we operate as a team. The sum is far greater than parts. You have to operate as a team. There has to be a team to achieve an objective and individual ego has to be put away. The, the most important thing is objective to complete. Our experience to leadership and management in the business world is basically the uh, Leif Babin and Jacob Willing wrote this book and their experiences are applied as we already said it. And there can be no leadership where there is no team. So to, for, um, for team to exist, there should be a leadership. Relax, look around and make a call. Now, I will tell you this uh, story at the beginning well when uh, during seal training basically there are six guys that have to carry these boats and stuff and every this uh, they really they, these people have team leaders supposed to have team leaders and there was this guy that used to have negative attitude complain you know attitude that oh i'm so unlucky to have these people in our, my own team and he would blame and there was this number one team that was winning every champ everything basically would go be first in every competition and suddenly the instructors decided to switch the leaders. So the best leader, the best team leader goes to worst team. And the worst team leader goes to, to lead the best team. Guess what happens? The worst team almost catches up and surpasses in most areas to this best team. And to their surprise, the best team suddenly goes down. Why? Because of leader's attitude, leader's mindset, leader could not create a team and then when this leader with this attitude went to best team he dragged the entire team down instead of pulling them up that your performance started to drop they must believe in cause of, for which they are fighting they must believe in the plan they are asked to execute and most important they must believe in and trust the leader they are asked to follow this is important principle in business world as well you cannot tell people and cannot give them a leader that is not qualified. This is important. We encourage leaders to do the things they know they probably should be doing, but are not. By not doing those things, they are failing as leaders and failing their teams. Kind of everybody knows what they should be doing. And we have seen it this throughout the book. And I will tell you also some stories later. Everybody kind of knows what they should be doing but they are not for example there was this mike uh, and andy story basically them andy was kind of people call remember called names there was a ceo essential story stories towards i make it um, pay attention to it. it was a ceo essentially and his friend was working for him and the unit his friend was working uh it was a really to electricity was lacking and actually was losing money and the andy knew that he had to fire this man, but he was his friend. He couldn't do it. And he knew that this unit, that unit kind of would become profitable for th in three to five years or three to five years out of time for his business, the business he was in. But he was not doing it. Why? Because it was his friend. He knew what he should have done, but he, he wasn't doing it. And this is the, the point. Yeah, he done later did it after Jaco talked talk to him, talked to him into it. But we encourage, but this idea quote of we encourage leaders to do the things they know they probably should be doing, but are not, are not. This this is what the example I've, I've told you. But not doing those things, they are failing as leaders and failing their team. And so, and most of the time, you have to be aggressive in terms of that. Your decision should not be that don't you won't take decision at all. And for this example, there was two um, leaders and that won't 
did not like each other, different um, parts of corporation worked into different, and both of them wanted each other to be fired and they were creating chaos and negative attitude in entire company. And the CEO decided to, first decided to just don't make any decision at all and see how these things will turn out. But that's not the way, but that's not the way. These people create negative attitude. They cannot get along with each other, even though this is necessary for the plan, for battle of, for all of us. They are fighting. Do you want this type of people in? This is what they leave and Jaco talked her into. Or him. Um, and uh, the point, the story of the point you will get, get to try. So, he told him this story about his Navy experience and how same kind of thing happened and how uh, the military, both of these men get fired. And she should have done kind of the same thing because this like, do you want your subordinates, people that should be working for you, to hold you as prisoners and blackmail you with stuff that, or throw this thing away and throw that, and they're like fighting each other and cannot, don't, I'm not even trying to get along with each other. Do you want this type of people in? No, they don't. And so, she makes tough decision to fire both of them. And it was tough decision, but it was worth it. Because it also gives other people what kind of example it sets for other people that work in the corporation. Not good one. Simple but not easy. Have this in your mind. Leaders must own. Uh, leaders must uh, own everything in their world. There is no one else to blame. When you are a leader, when you want to be a leader, and you are a leader, you cannot blame anyone. It's up to you. You, point your finger at you. Look at the mirror. That's all. Look at the man in the mirror. That's all. Because you have to, oh, who else are blame, are going to blame? Let's say you're in a combat situation in the military, right? And etc. You don't get along with your teammates, etc. Are you going to start fighting about that while you are like, bombarded by enemy fire? Are you going to be like, no, I don't like you. No, you're fraud line, you're battlefield. You have to find a way. You have to take responsibility. You have to lead. You have to have presence on mind on that situation. You cannot, you cannot start panic there, as a leader, because that will be contagious. Everyone will start panic if you do. And the worst leader is the leader that need to be held up by their teammates. This is this is where moral drops down. Everything drop down, drops down. Now. The leader is truly and ultimately responsible for everything. Everything. This is the responsibility of a leader. Own it. As individuals, we often attribute the success of others to luck or circumstances and make excuses for our, our own failures and failures of our team. We blame our own poor performance and own bad luck. Circumstances beyond our control or poor performing subordinates. Anyone but ourselves. Anyone but ourselves, and how how it's mentioned there, um, we all like we blame our, our own poor performance on bad luck, circumstances beyond our control, or poor performing subordinates. Anyone but ourselves. Trolders take responsibility. Now people are against generally against change. So classic mantra against change is something like this: We have always done it this way, and if it's not broken, we don't fix it. <laughs> you cannot make people listen to you. You cannot make them execute. That might be a temporary solution for a simple task, but to implement real change, to drive people to accomplish something truly complex or difficult or dangerous, you cannot make people to do these things. You have to lead them. With extreme ownership, you must remove individual ego and personal agenda. It's all about the mission. How can you best get your team to most effectively execute the plan in order to accomplish the mission. That should be your question. That's what, because that's what matters. Not a physical test, but a mental one. Sale training, for example. People think it's about, men, it's about physical, but it's not. It's a mental test. And you are surprised what kind of people pass this test. And battlefield at the same time. It's not about what, how the size of your muscle and what kind of experience you have, but are you able to stay calm when shit gets real? 
Are you able to stay calm when there are enemy fire? Are you able to stay calm when in business there's a crucial moment where everybody is panicked? Is it in, are you able as a leader to maintain your posture, maintain your calm manner, maintain your mental attitude toward winning, toward getting out of the situation, toward beating the enemies? Are you able to do that? That's a mental challenge, not a physical one. No, not the, that's not the physical at all. So, you know, about this, about SEALs training. Such training graduated men who were not only physically taught, but who could also outthink their adversaries. Can you outthink your adversaries? It pays to be a winner and really sucks to be a loser. Leaders must enforce standards. You know, there is this moment like when his attitude reflected victimization. You can choose, you can be a leader or a victim. You cannot be both. Make the choice. You can be a winner or a victim. You cannot be both. Winner or a victim. Make those choices because that's important. You should not be leading if you want to have this mental uh, attitude of victim. No, you cannot be both in this case. Torture, uh, torture genius. Basically, this is a type that accepts their responsibility takes no ownership at all and blames everything and everyone expects. So, when it comes to performance standards, not what you preach, it's what you tolerate. When it comes to performance standards, it's not what you preach, it's what you tolerate. There are only two types of leaders. So true. There are only two types of leaders. Effective and ineffective. Of course, effective leaders that lead Successful, high-performance teams exhibit extreme ownership. Anything else is simply ineffective. Anything else is bad leadership. Whatever name, anything after effective, it's ineffective. It's bad leadership if it's not, if it's not effective. Whether in SEAL training, in combat, on distant battle, battlefield, in business or in life, there are no bad teams only bad leaders. Now, there was this example of, of a CEO firing chief technology officer because he was not taking ownership at all and he was against this idea of, he was like, we are essentially what he was saying, for, for real, this is what he was saying, like, we are doing everything right, but we are still failing. And this is a civilian saying this, by the way in civil environment. Like, if you are doing everything right, how are you failing? The fact that this is the, the result it shows. The result shows that you are not doing everything right or you are not doing enough because you are failing. But no, a CTO doesn't want you to accept this thing. And he was too arrogant and didn't want you to take ownership and leadership. So he had to be fired. Because he was giving bad examples to others that are, were willing to take this extreme ownership. Because what you tolerate sets example. If, and this is so by the so key moment, what you tolerate sets an example. If I express doubt or openly question the wisdom of this plan in front of the troops, their de de division toward the mission would increase exponentially. And I will tell you what's about it meant. Uh, they would never believe in it. As a result, they would never commit to it and it would fail. Basically, SEALs were asked to take Iraqi troops with them, friendly Iraqi troops with them in the, those missions. And these Iraqi troops were one of the most um, untrained. Basically, they were just civilians that mostly accepted this job to have a, a, a pay. And they were not dressed well, they had bad weapons, they were untrained, undisciplined. Uh, some most of the time they would run or panic, they would do some crazy things. But also, so like when Jack Horst did this comment, he got angry, fully furious. Why? Like, it just kind of seemed like suicide mission. Why would you add trouble when you are going on a hostile environment already? But he started to think uh, about them, plan why, why leaders wanted to do it well. They cannot stay there forever, US troops. At some point, Iraqi troops have to take control of the situation. That's what's one point. Now, after 
and this is what he explained to his team. And later, when um, these Iraqi troops and the SEALs would go together, like Iraqi troops would be useful in surprising ways that he did not foresee before. Like it's, uh, it's around the principle of war to take locals. Like they could, uh, you know, differentiate between ter you know ter like uh, terrorists or you know people. They could negotiate. They could open some certain doors a lot more easier, etc. And also, and there was also upside to this idea. And he was able to foresee it. And he did not let his emotions get best of him. He managed to step back from his emotions and think through it. Every leader must be able to detach from the immediate tactical mission and understand how it fits to in, into strategic goal. Exactly what he did about this uh, when he received this command about taking Iraqi troops with him. The leaders must explain not just what to, to do, but why. And exactly what he did. He explained why to his team, other SEALs that were against this uh, idea of um, taking this untrained. It was perfectly logical, by the way. Why would you want to do that? But he explained why with them, why to his, you know, other seals. A common misperception, uh, you know, there was this example about um, a very successful uh, leader, uh, and she worked as a. Uh, she, I, I'm, I'm, I don't remember exactly position, position, but she was probably high level. Um, uh, manager or uh, CEO or uh, leader of a marketing unit um, High level of course and Basically, she was very smart charismatic. She was a boss and She saw the new sales plan. She was putting in Made perfect sense for everybody because nobody asked the question yeah, But this sales plan was perfect, but uh, mid-level uh, you know managers um, were scared. They did not want it to us, uh, appear stupid. Of course, before they knew about extreme ownership. They did not want it to appear stupid. They didn't want to ask that question. But to her, it seemed like they understood it. But they did not. They were confused. So these mid-level managers, they would go to, uh, to their teams and they would be confused because they would look uh, like stupid because how could they explain a plan to their people uh, they are in charge with when they don't even understand this plan? This would this this simple misperception was bringing entire chaos to entire company. Now Jaco or Leaf, I don't remember which one it was basically went into it and talked to her into you know the situation. First she kind of got defensive, but later she understood it. So she made quick visit while Jaco and was interacting this uh, middle level managers and you know explained to it and now. People ask, ask the question, everything starts to make perfect sense. But now, whose fault was it? Extreme ownership. You had to ask. And extreme ownership? Yes. She had to explain as well. But they had to, first of all, they had to ask first because the, she could not just, you know, dream about it because she thought they understood it. That she also had to make sure they understood why. But at the same time, the middle level manager should have asked if they did not understand it. Extreme ownership. It's my fault. Not knowing the why prohibits you from believing in the mission. They, did not, uh, they could not understand the why of this new plan. When you are in leadership position, that is a recipe for failure. And it is unacceptable. As a leader, you must believe. You must believe in your plan. Just like in this case, like middle managers not believed in, not only did not believe in, but didn't even understood. How could they explain to it to others? Overconfidence was risky in such a hostile moment, a mistake most often made by warriors who have never truly been tested. Ego clouds and disrupts everything. The planning process, the ability to take good advice, and the ability to accept constructive criticism. It can even stifle someone's sense of self-preservation. Often the most difficult ego to deal with is your own. Ego drives the most successful people in life, in SEAL team, in the military, in the business world. They want to win, to be, be the best. That is good, but when ego clouds our judgment and prevents us from seeing the world as it is, then ego becomes destructive. 
when personal agendas become more important than team and the overarching mission success, performance suffers and failure ensues. Admitting mistakes, taking ownership and developing a plan to overcome challenges are integral to any successful team. Ego can prevent a leader from conducting an honest, realistic assessment of his or her own performance and the performance of the team. We strive to be confident but not cocky. Powerful observation. No option was good option. We had to choose the least bad option. Cover and move. This is what teamwork is all about. Help each other, work together and support each other to win. Make them part of your team, not an excuse for your team. Know what you can do to help them get what you need. This is a question you should be asking. What can do to help them, whoever this them are, they, may, they are your team, in fact, them get what you want, need what you need. Ask that question. When plans and orders are too complicated, people may not understand them. And when things go wrong, they inevitably do go wrong. Complexity compounds issues that can spiral out of control into total disaster. They had a blue, a blue to a blue, which means that basically us versus us happened once while Jaco was there. Basically, seals against seals. Because, because complexity, because of confusion. And Chaco went through there and barely, you know, barely managed to fix this situation. Because this is what, what, and second time this kind of thing also occurred while they were in these six months there. This is, this why the plans should be clear. So blue to blue don't happen. If your team does not get it, you have not kept things simple and you have failed. In the business world and in life, there are inherent complexities. It is critical to keep plans and communications simple. Following this rule is crucial to the success of any team in any combat business or life. All animals, including humans, need to see the connection between action and consequence in order to learn and react appropriately. Have this in your mind. Connection between action and consequence. People generally take the path of least resistance. It is just our, uh, our nature. People generally take, we generally, as humans, take paths of least resistance. It is just in our nature. Because we don't want to suffer. And after this, by the way, if you have not seen, uh, check uh, my summary of um, Cannot Hurt Me by David Goggins. Like, because we want to take paths of least resistance. And how many times have you took paths of least resistance? instead of true past that you should have taken. It's just our nature again. When confident with the enorm enormity of operation plans and the intricate micro-terrain micro micro with these plans, it becomes easy to get lost in the details, to become sidetracked or lost focus on the bigger effort. It is crucial, particularly for the leaders at the top of the organization pull themselves off the firing line, step back and maintain the strategic picture. Again, relax, look around and make a call. <laughs> Priorities can rapidly shift and change. Uh, the uh, they are to four, right? Principle. Priority and can rapidly shift and change. It will be linked after uh, this um, summary is at the end of the video, so check them out. They could not, now let's keep a little, this conversation going on. They could not ask, what do I do? Instead, they had to state, that is what I'm going to do. Junior leaders, basically. This is the idea of decentralized command. It's because we human beings are generally not capable of managing more than six to 10 people. Particularly when things go sideways and inevitably contingencies, uh, contingencies arise. No one senior leader can be expected to manage dozens of individuals, much or less hundreds. Team must be broken down to into manageable elements of four to five operators. 
which with a clearly designated leader. Those leaders must be, understand the overall mission and the ultimate goal of the mission, the commander's intent. Junior leaders must be empowered to make decisions on key tasks necessary to accomplish that mission in the most effective and, um, and efficient manner possible. Junior leaders must be proactive rather than reactive. Tactical leaders must be confident that they clearly understand the strategic mission and commander's intent. They must have uh, implicit trust that their senior leaders will make their decisions. Without this trust, junior leaders cannot confidently execute, which means they cannot exercise effective decentralized command. Yes, because they have to know that you will back them up. See, because senior leaders will make their decisions. This is what juniors need to know. Junior leaders. Leaders must be free to move to where they are most needed, which changes throughout the course of an operation. Yeah, four to six men to team with leader. This is great number. Open conversations. You know, there's this case, by the way, there. Uh, you know, um, branch manager um, was given to a guy that was leading two people and same Satu was just uh, given to a guy that was leading 22 people of team. So four to six men, this is what makes great team. And not this, uh, you know, different differentiations. Because in long term and uh, in short term, this will bring troubles. So you would rather have this effective team What builds trust? Open conversations builds trust. Overcoming stress and challenging environments builds trust. Working through emergencies and seeing how people react build trust. Junior leaders must know that the boss will back them up even if they make a decision that may not result in the best outcome, as long as the decision was made in an effort to achieve the strategic objective. Now, we were lucky, but we had also made our luck. Powerful. What the mission? Planning begins with mission analysis. A broad and ambiguous mission results in lack of focus, ineffective execution, and mission, mission creep to prevent this. The mission must be carefully refined and simplified so that it is explicitly clear and specifically focused to achieve the greater strategic vision for which that mission is part. Those who will not risk cannot win, Seal, but SEALs calculate risk very carefully. One must make time. What went right, uh, what went wrong, how can we adapt our tactics to make us even more effective and increase our advantage over the enemies. This is called uh, AAA, basically after action report, and this is crucial. Because uh, such as self examination goal of SEALs needs to reevaluate, inchate, and refine what worked and what did not, so that they can constantly improve. And you have to make time for this thing. No matter how tired you are, etc., one must make time for these things because it, this is very important. Lean towards selecting the simplest course of action, focused effort on the best course of action. Our ability to plan is enabling us to better execute and win. As a leader, Employing extreme ownership, if your team is not doing what you need them to do, you first have to look at yourself. Other than blaming them for not seeing the strategic picture, you must figure out a way to better communicate it, is, it, uh, better communicate it to them in terms that they are simple, clear and conscious, so they understand. If your boss is not making a decision in a timely manner or providing necessary support for you and your team, don't blame the boss. First blame yourself. Examine what you can do uh, what you do um, to better convey the critical information for discuss discussions to be made and support allocated. One of the most important jobs of any leader is to support your own boss, your immediate leadership. Because higher-ups would ask detailed information and they needed this information that, and they would provide this information. Now, major factors to be aware when leader leading up and down the chain of commands are this. Take responsibility for leading everyone in your world, subordinates and superiors alike, lead up. If someone is not doing what you want or need them to do, look in the mirror first and determine what you can do to better enable this. Don't ask your leader what you should do, tell them what you are going to do. 
again, he was lucky, but more often than uh, not, he made his luck about the sniper. American sniper available. Know your target and what is beyond it. In com uh, know your target and what is beyond it. Have this in mind. In combat and uh, basically this uh, coach uh, saved uh, him from killing his own teammate because they were about to go blue to blue. But remember this thing and he stayed strong on his decision. In combat as in life, the outcome is never certain. The picture never clear. There are no guarantee of success, but in order to succeed, leaders must be comfortable, under pressure, and act on logic, not on emotion. This is a critical component to victory. As a leader, default settings should be aggressive, proactive rather than reactive. Powerful. Instead of letting the situation dictate our decisions, we must dictate the situation. And again, human beings tend to resist the change. Discipline is paramount uh, to ultimate success and victory for any leader and any team. Discipline. The balance between discipline and freedom must be found and carefully maintained. Your, uh, your uh, routine should not get in your way or discipline. It basically, ability you to adapt. You have to be able to adapt. A leader must lead, but also be ready to follow a team. Basically, maybe your team suddenly sees something that you have not uh, seen. So this is important. And now let's, as an ending, let's read this. How a good leader must be. A good leader must be confident, but not courageous, but not foolhardy. Competitive, but a gracious loser. Attentive to details, but not obsessed by them. Strong, but have endurance. A leader must a leader and follower. Humble, not passive. Aggressive, not overbearing. Quiet, not silent. Calm but not robotic, logical but not devoid of emotions. Close with the troops but not so close that one becomes more important than other, another, or more important the good of the team. Not so close that they forget who is in charge. Oh, we read, uh, told, I told, told you about this example about Andy and Mike. Able to execute extreme ownership while exercising decentralized command. A good leader has nothing to prove but everything to prove. Have these things in your mind. Check these videos, it will be shown somewhere here. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. See you.